Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro here, and in this video I'm going to teach you guys how pointers work in C++, so let's get into it. So basically, whenever we declare a variable, that variable has an address in your computer's memory where this value of that variable is going to be stored. So pointers are necessary for dynamic memory allocation, and that can't be performed without them. So we'll be using pointers for a project when we cover the topic on arrays and how they can be useful. So let's begin by creating a few variables and I'll show you how this works. I already have one string variable named name and I assign this a value of bro. Let's create another, maybe an integer variable named age and I will assign this a value of maybe 100. I am 100 years old. And let's display these using a cout statement. So we'll see out name and then add an end line after and see out age. And we'll also add an end line after this as well. So this, as you would expect, will display the word bro and the number 100. So now there's this ampersand symbol that you can add to a variable. And this is called the reference operator, also known as an address of operator. I've heard people call it both things. So this will return a variable's address in memory, as in the street address in RAM where it's currently located. So let's run this and see what happens now. Alright, so we get these two funky numbers. The first one is for our first variable, and the second one is for our second variable, edge. So think of this like your own street address for wherever you live. For example, like 123 fake street, except this number is the address for wherever this value is stored. Well, this number is kind of the same thing, but instead of a street address, it's the street address in your computer's memory where you can find this value. It's the location in RAM of this variable. And one thing that you may notice that every time we compile and run this program, the address may change. So these addresses are really only temporary. Now, you don't even need to assign these variables a value. Just by declaring these variables, you're already creating an address of where these variables are going to store a value. So let's run this again, but we're not going to assign a value. So you can see that these variables, even though they do not store a value, they're only declared, we still have space for them to actually store a value at these addresses in our computer's memory. Now the next step is that we can store an address in a separate variable, and that is what's called a pointer. A pointer is a variable that stores the address of another variable. And to create a pointer, we need to declare a pointer just like we do with other variables or constants. So this is what you do to create a pointer. So let's clear out what we have now and start fresh. So let's create a string variable named name. You know what, I guess we could have kept this line, but too late, I already deleted it. And an integer variable named age, and I will set this back to 100. Now, these are the steps to create a pointer. Now, the first step is that if we're going to create a pointer for a variable, we first need to list the data type of the variable that we're going to create a pointer of. If we're going to create a pointer of this variable name, that's a string. We're going to declare this as a string. The second step is that we're going to list an asterisk. And this is known as a dereference operator, and it returns the location value of a variable. Now we need a unique name for this pointer. A common naming convention is that you take the name of the variable, and you add a p before it, and you take the first character of that variable and make it uppercase. Uh, other names would still work. That's just one naming convention. Uh, so this is basically the pointer for our name variable. And we're going to set this uh, equal to ampersand name, which is the address of our name variable. And p name is now a pointer for this variable. So let's do the same thing with our age then, following the same rules. So we need to list the data type of this other variable, which is an int for integer, an asterisk. So we're using the dereference operator. Then let's create a name for this pointer. So I'm just going to type in edge, add P before it, and change the first letter to capital. So P edge for pointer edge. And we'll set this equal to the ampersand and then edge. All right, so we have made 
two pointers. And let's actually display this just to prove that I'm not a liar. So we're going to C out P name, then maybe ENDL, and C out P edge ENDL as well. So what you get here is that this these pointers are going to display the addresses of these variables then. Yeah, that seems like it works then. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you display the dereference operator along with these pointers, uh, it actually is going to display the value at these addresses. So we got our values bro and 100, and that kind of defeats the purpose. So if you're working with these pointers um, or you're displaying them, make sure that you don't also include the dereference operators so let's create one more pointer just for practice. I'll create a string variable. Maybe we'll call this food equals, and then list your favorite food here. For me, that's pizza. All right, so we have a variable named food. I want to create a pointer for this. So we need to type in the data type. So string, use the dereference operator. Then we're going to create a new name for this pointer. P food equals ampersand, then the name of our variable, so food. And let's display this. So C out P food ENDL. And here is the address that is contained within our pointer P food for our variable food. So these pointers may not seem too useful right now, but at least we know how to create them. They're used in dynamic memory allocation, and when we get to the topic of arrays, we're going to be creating a project where we will want some dynamic memory because it's really useful to have. So that's the basics of pointers. Hopefully this video gave you a few pointers as to how pointers work. If you would like a copy of all this code that we worked on, I'll post it in the comments down below. And if you're looking for additional practice, then in the comments section, post how about three pointers that you created. But yeah, that is how pointers work in C++. Hey you, if you enjoyed this lesson, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.